So you've got $500 burning a hole in your pocket, you're in the market for an Android tablet with a big screen and powerful innards, and you don't see the need for a stylus. Well, Samsung's Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1 was built just for you. The question is, will you like it if you take it home? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1. The Tab Pro 10.1's hardware will hold very few surprises for those accustomed to seeing Samsung tablets on retail shelves. It's a wide, thin, lightweight device with a trio of controls below its 10.1-inch super clear LCD. The screen's pixel density stands just shy of 300 pixels per inch, producing a crisper image than we're used to seeing at this size, though straying far from the center line will get you a substantial washout in the color palette. In the hand, the Tab Pro 10.1 suffers from the same handicap of nearly all tablets with an 8 to 5 aspect ratio. It's fairly difficult to type on in landscape and fairly awkward to use in portrait. But in exchange, you've got a nice wide screen area for viewing HD video and browsing the web, so there's that. In terms of innards, our review model is the SMT520, the Wi-Fi only edition with the Exynos 5 Okta backed up by 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of storage. There's also microSD expansion available for those interested in loading their own media onto the tab. Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi AC, and IR round out the connectivity package, with LTE included only on the Qualcomm-powered variant. The Galaxy Tab Pro ships with the newest major build of Android, 4.4.2 KitKat, with Samsung's newest third-party UI running on top, the Magazine UX. And all of it is running on hardware that's some of the newest and most powerful available. Sadly, Despite all this newness, Samsung's software still struggles. It's the half-baked sense of it all that bothers us the most. The widgets inexplicably sliding off the home screen. The surprise app crashes. The formatting problems when using multi-window. That last bit really gets under our skin. Multitasking is one of Samsung's most compelling offerings. And to see it executed so terribly with apps like YouTube and Twitter is very disappointing. And then there's the magazine portion of the Magazine UX, which turns out to be much less ambitious than we were led to believe at CES. It's less a home screen replacement than an accessory. While you can plug in features like a calendar or Samsung's email client, those add-ons are very limited at this point. And even when displaying the news and social feeds it's designed to show, it's pretty wonky. It doesn't always automatically refresh itself. It has only the barest customization options and our version frequently timed out with a flipboard error when we tried changing its settings. We're hoping an update will arrive to fix these and other shortcomings. We've reached out to Samsung for comment, and if the company provides one, it'll be available in our full review, linked in the description. On the plus side, there are some enhancements worth getting excited about. The new multi-window launchpad makes much more sense anchored to the side of the display. The new multitasking button is very welcome, and Samsung's watch-on feature for controlling a home entertainment system is still excellent. If you're the type of couch potato who splits your attention between the TV screen and your tablet display when you're vegging, watch-on is meant just for you. We used the Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1 over the course of a week in home and office settings. For work, Samsung includes the excellent Hancom Office Suite and remote PC software, as well as Knox and on-device encryption. For play, even graphically demanding titles play well on the 10-inch screen. And for both worlds, Samsung offers an array of Galaxy perks to sweeten the pot when you buy one of these. The 8-megapixel camera around back is nothing to throw a party over, but it's nothing to sneeze at either. While you probably wouldn't want to take pictures with it in public, it's plenty capable of doing so in a pinch, and it adapts well to a range of lighting conditions. It's also plenty sharp for photographing text to be scanned into a document. The front-facing camera will portray you in a reasonably flattering light under most conditions as well. Video from the primary camera is surprisingly clear, with quick autofocus and exposure adjustments, though the frame rate isn't the best we've seen, and the microphone is very susceptible to wind noise. Up into the sun, down below, pretty quick fix there, let's see if we can check focus. We should mention that this is a rather windy day, so audio artifacts can be expected. My hands are shaking a little bit. Not that it's cold, but, uh, you know, drink a lot of coffee. What do you want? 
Speaking of noise, the Tab Pro 10.1's speakers can make some. It's not as loud as some other devices we've used, but the sound from the left and right speaker ports is crisp and should serve you well for watching video or streaming audio in a quiet room. Finally, there's the matter of battery life. The Tab Pro 10.1 packs a 31 watt hour battery, and despite the high resolution screen, it lasts a fairly long time. With heavy use, we've been able to average two days between charges, with a screen on time of between four and five hours. Without USB 3.0, though, the Tab Pro does take its sweet time charging, around five hours from empty to full. So make sure you top it off before a road trip. In the end, the Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1 is a mixed bag. We like its broad feature set, its powerful suite of bundled software, and its high-resolution screen. And controlling a TV from a tablet never fails to give us a geeky thrill. But the software is just so inconsistent. It feels almost like a pre-production beta build of an Android UI. And it's not. It's on sale right now for $499 a price tag we think is a little high for software so in need of polish. Were you expecting more? Well, that's what the written review is for. For benchmarks, screenshots, and in-depth impressions, and more, check out the full review of the Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1 linked in the description down below. The very first link you see, also down there, a like button. Please press it if you did enjoy this review, and please leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the 10.1 if you own one or have played with one long enough to gain valid insight. Thank you for watching. As always, follow us on social media so you can see what we're talking about in the Twitter sphere, the Facebook world, the land of Instagram, and at forums.pocketnow.com. Most importantly, once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.